Hey everybody, I'm Kinkus and I'm a synth DIY guy. I was inspired by a post somebody was asking about a simple switch to just turn off CV going to any destination and I thought well that would be a pretty easy thing to DIY with just a switch and a couple of jacks and then I thought you could go even further and make it extra useful by making it an AB switch with the center off. So that means you can not only turn off the CV but you can also route it to two different destinations. So you'd have three options to route it to the A, the A destination, route it to the B destination and turn it off altogether. So, and that's actually something that would be very useful and interesting as an addition to my Patch Pals series of little helper doodads. So let's, let's see how we can pull this off here. So these are three jacks. I think it'll probably be easier if I start by clipping off the unused leads like the switch and the grounds so that we only have the actual contact right at least on the input one which is going to go into the center terminal of the switch itself this looks like it could be pretty solid how about we start by tinning the two connections i've got this useful little alligator holder in my work stand so let's start by tinning this center connection of the switch right here be careful because these switches sometimes they tend to be the plastic tends to be fragile so if you warm it up too much you will end up melting that plastic and losing the switch so don't do that okay so now we've tinned both connections there and we can now solder them together like how was it that I had it? it? Made sense. Let's see. I actually like this. So now I can just hold them together, and since they're tinned, I can just touch touch them at the tip of my iron, and they'll they'll get soldered together. Perfect. Okay. So now I just need to add two more switches to these other terminals right here. I mean not switches, I mean jacks. Okay, and again I think it'll be a good idea to clip off the terminals that we're not using. So there's one, there's two, and just make sure you're clipping off the switch, not the tip. The tip is the one that's attached to the tongue that actually touches the tip of the jack once you plug the jack in. If you have uh, doubts about it, plug in a jack and use your multimeter in continuity mode. Alright, so let's let's tin the other two terminals on this switch right here. Good bit of solder there to make sure that the connections are nice and sturdy. And we can do the... Oh, that was hot. Just burned myself. So let's, let's prepare all of these. Of course, we are not going to want the jacks to only be held down by their terminals. So once we're done, we're probably going to make some ground bridges with some resistor legs to add to the structural stability of the whole device. But we'll start with just making the electrical connections. There we go. Just hold these together like this, or maybe I, I should use the helping hands here. I think I'm going to use another, another set of helping hands here to hold this in place so I can use both my hands to do the soldering well, like that. Here we go. Oh, that's not solder. <laughs> Here we go, clean up the iron tip often. And there we go. Now that seems to be pretty solid. Let's do this, oh no, not again. I didn't wait for it to cool again. I guess my iron's a little too hot for the job. Yeah, now keep it 
keep it steady while the solder cools. There you go, that did it. And now we'll do the same with this side right here. Okay, so electrically we're almost done. It would we'd still need to interconnect all of the grounds together. And that's also gonna help with our structural stability. So yeah, I think it's just gonna be better to use uh, a resistor leg or something. Put a resistor leg right on top there and solder it to one side. And then to the other. Make sure that it actually sticks to the jack body. Trim off the excess resistor leg. Careful not to burn your fingers again. Okay, that's pretty good. Why don't we just tin the jack bodies. There we go. That's a good idea. Then I only need one hand to solder and I can use my other hand to hold the resistor leg in place. And here we go. Let's wait for it to solidify. And now we can do the same with the bottom one. And what I'll do now is I'll hold it down with my pliers while it cools so it doesn't snap back up. Right, so that's the ground connection on one side. Just do the same to the other side. All right, let's tin the jack bodies again. Here and here. And once again, we'll grab another resistor leg. solder it on squeeze it down okay so now we have all the grounds connected so um, between these two jacks and also between each output jack and the input jack already this feels better structurally speaking however uh, I'm not completely convinced about that so I think I'd like to make a couple more resistor leg bridges. Maybe I just need to add a second resistor leg to each side here. So with two of them it'll be more sturdy. Let's try that on one side and see if it works. Alright, blow on it. So it cools. And do the same on this side. down while it cools. All right, so now we have a double resistor leg happening here. Do the same to the other side. Again, if you use like something thicker, like a power diode leg that might be strong enough already without you needing to use two. Alright, that definitely feels more, more sturdy, more sturdy now. And to make this one more sturdy too, we can just fill it in with a whole bunch of solder right under that resistor leg right there. And that'll make it pretty solid, I think. Let's make sure your iron is touching both jacks so that it sticks to both of them. Now, there we go. That looks pretty good, see? We fold it out inside. This looks pretty solid. 
Now, the issue here now is how to cover this up. So, so it's not so exposed, you know, so the connections aren't so exposed, especially the signal connections down here. I've got this very thick heat shrink right here that barely fits two jacks on one side. So we can go ahead and cut a parallel cut right here like this. And that's gonna cover up one side of my switch while still leaving the the inputs, the outputs exposed. That's be good. All right, so that's half of it covered up. I can take another little bit, cover up the rest of. It. I again burned my finger. Just make sure you cool things, blow on them. Blow on them and it should be enough. Now here, to cover up the rest of this, I should probably get an idea for how, how thick it needs to be, roughly. I think this will do. And I can make a little, little triangular cut in the middle here for the switch shaft. Like that. And stick that in there. Maybe even more so that it actually goes all the way to the other to the other side. So let's make this opening a little wider. and burn it up. You definitely get a newish lighter. This one is running out of gas and it's kind of annoying. Maybe even light a candle or something. Good. So that's it. The patch pal AB switch. Just remember that the uh, the switch is actually going to direct the input signal to the opposite output to the switch position. That's just how switches work. Uh, and you can also use it bidirectionally, meaning you can send one signal to two separate outputs, but you can also select between two different signals into one output. So this can be useful in many ways. You can just use it as an off switch use it as an AB switch and you can use it to select from one input to two outputs or from two inputs to one output and this is very very handy and it doesn't take up any HP it's really cheap and it was pretty easy to make so it took me literally 25 minutes to make this and it was the first time I made it so cool hope you like this little tutorial if you did like and subscribe and help us out on patreon and stay noisy have fun